All flights within the continental United States are non-smoking flights. That's the law, and the flight attendants make it very clear. But Inside Edition has been investigating charges that some passengers are lighting up, putting everybody at risk, and the airlines may be letting them get away with it. Steve Wilson is our reporter. We'd like to take a few moments to welcome you on board. From the moment you climb aboard any U.S. airliner, you're almost constantly reassured there's nothing to worry about. Once they're aboard, we'd like to sit back, relax, enjoy your flight with us. Despite some serious accidents earlier this year, getting there by air is still the safest way to travel. And nobody wants to imagine a flight that ends like this. The fire aboard this Air Canada jetliner started in the air, and by the time the pilot could land the thing in Cincinnati, half his passengers were dead. What started the fire? Investigators say a lighted cigarette tossed in a lavatory trash bin is a good possibility. It's not the image you want to think about as you climb seven miles or more into the sky. But the way some airlines are dealing with smokers now, flight attendants and other insiders know. It's an accident waiting to happen. While most smokers take their final puffs before boarding, more and more are slipping into an airplane lavatory and sneaking a smoke illegally in flight. There have been times I've actually had to knock on the lavatory door and say, excuse me. And of course, you know, they flush it down the toilet and dispose of it right away. If you've been on board, you've seen the signs and warnings and heard the threats of heavy fines. But the truth is, that's not stopping plenty of passengers from puffing. And virtually nobody's being prosecuted. While most of us sit there feeling perfectly safe, is there another disaster waiting to happen? Oh, certainly. There are, um, people are at great risk for fires on the airplane. Nobody in the airline business wants to advertise it, but fires in lavatories are happening at an alarming rate. One recent published report said on just one airline, flight attendants were putting out five fires a month. I alone have experienced five fires on my flights from cigarette smokers. That's what Patty Young told reporters in 1989 when she and other flight attendants were pushing hard for the in-flight smoking ban. After it went into effect and she spotted a smoker on board, the American Airlines captain refused to call authorities to prosecute the man. And when Patty asked a ground agent to do it, she got into trouble. And you virtually have a captain and an agent apologizing to a man who has just now broken a federal law and a flight attendant who's removed from the trip for insubordination. And that's the way they deal with flight attendants on it. On the one hand, you're supposed to enforce the air regulations. But on the other hand, don't push it too far. Make sure that this passenger still comes back. Make sure they still had a nice flight. Um, and make sure you smile the whole time. Most flight attendants know the Patty Young story. And many of them tell me their airline will come down just as hard on them if they speak up. Meanwhile, look at these reports we've obtained from the Federal Aviation Administration. Lavatory fire since the smoking ban. Eastern Flight 517 over Denver. Fire in the trash bin. Another plane out of JFK. Co-pilot extinguishes another fire in a lav and finds a cigarette in the trash bin. Northwest 151 over Seattle and Flight 353 over San Francisco. Cigarette fires in the labs. Pan Am Flight 90, Pan Am 453, same story. Many others may go unreported. We know of at least two others not on this list. You can see why the flight attendants are so worried, but why do some airlines want them to keep quiet? Well, I think there's pressure from management. Don't disconvenience the smoker. We don't want to lose the smoker's business. American Airlines refused to be interviewed for this report, but sent us a letter saying, we are fully committed to compliance with the no smoking rules, and we are fulfilling all our enforcement obligations. Regarding the Patty Young case, the letter says the captain erred by not working with a flight attendant to gather information for an incident report to the FAA. But Patty was also wrong to refuse the captain's instruction to stop pursuing the matter after they landed. New regulations have since been added to flight manuals. In my opinion, uh, they need new equipment. She's talking about one of the airline's most dangerous little secrets. Many lavatory smoke detectors are just not designed to detect cigarette smoke. Only the intense smoke and heat produced by a fire that's already going. American says there is no device that will detect light cigarette smoke without sounding false alarms due to dust, hairspray, even fog. So you can be unaware of a fire in a lavatory for some amount of time. And then you've got a very, very dangerous situation going on. It's already happened in Cincinnati and in Paris. It took them six minutes to get down 
But by the time they got down, virtually everyone on the airplane ultimately died from that incident. But we've learned even when a fire broke out aboard an American jet like this one, high in the sky over Amarillo, Texas, not long ago, no alarm sounded. The fire extinguisher failed. 66 people landed safely only after a flight attendant doused the fire with coffee and soft drinks. Our laboratories are equipped with smoke detection systems. I've been looking at smoke detection systems on lots of planes and photographing them with a small camera, but on an American DC-9 the other day, I couldn't find any sign of one. Neither could the flight attendants who helped me look during the flight. Neither could the co-pilot and the rest of the flight crew after we landed. The airline's local manager said it was behind a ceiling panel he just couldn't get to. My nail file. Who's got a screwdriver? And once he finally did get into it, I don't see it at all. Maybe in the back labs, he gave a good look there. You see it? It's not on that side. It's on the other side. The airplane is required to have one in every lab. And now we're in the last one on the plane. You see one in there? Not there either. Yeah, it may be behind that. Behind the telephone panel? That wouldn't make any sense. So he's back up in the ceiling again, and there it is, he says, a little gadget behind my hand. It looked like something else to me and to the airline mechanic I asked to come aboard to verify it. It's a light transformer? Yes. Sealed in a compartment under the sink, the mechanic claimed this was the smoke alarm buzzer, but we never did find anything that could actually sense any smoke. American's letter, which was written before our impromptu inspection, says all of our aircraft lavatories are outfitted with FAA-approved smoke heat detection equipment. They have not returned phone calls we've made to find out why nobody could find that equipment on this airplane. Well, the FAA has the responsibility to enforce the law, and, and the law is very clear, no smoking aboard aircraft. But still, the government says if they stop when you catch them, forget it. That is what they say, yes. What kind of enforcement is that? It's really uh, no enforcement. Uh, why should someone uh, stop or, or not do it again if there is no fine, there's no enforcement in the law? Flight attendants are told to make reports of smoking violations, but sources say the airlines don't always turn them over to the FAA. Because as it stands now, there's no requirement? That well, the, 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 the way it's worded is that they, that they should be. And, and they should turn it over? Yes, yes. Not that they must or that they shall or that's right reports go to faa offices all over nobody here even knows how many they don't want to burden the airlines at this time um, I, I think big business is putting the pressure on the faa faa administrator james Busey not only refused to talk his airline pals helped him sneak out a back door of an airline conference when they spotted us there to ask him about this issue it's you just, just a courtesy a courtesy oh, okay. to, to help him avoid well, something he doesn't want to talk about. Are you telling about. me? They duck out the back doors and, and just, what, wait for another disaster? Or wait until concerned people tell them that it's time to stop ducking and start doing, perhaps. One footnote, flight attendant Norma Broin may have put her job at risk by talking to Steve Wilson, but she has a higher mission. You see, Norma has lung cancer, and doctors say she got it from breathing smoke in airplanes.